<clears throat> we'll call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who is in attendance. We've got a full house again tonight, and uh, for all those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. Uh, to begin with tonight, I have uh, Paul Levesque, the president of uh, Rolling, the Rolling Thunder chapter here in Jacksonville. I'd ask you uh, if you would have your group come forward and do the uh, uh, honor us by leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we'll have the uh, invocation by John Carter after that. Father, we pause again this evening to give you thanks, to give you thanks for the blessings that you so graciously bestow upon us as the city of Jacksonville and upon us individually. We give thanks tonight for all the young people who will be recognized by our mayor and council, for their parents, for their teachers, and for the good work you have begun in each of them. Please continue that in the future. We give thanks for our Rolling Thunder veterans and for their continued contribution to our city and our community. We pray for our service members who are actively serving us now, here, and around the world, for their safety and for their anxious families. And as always, we pray your guidance would be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, Council, the first uh, item we'll do is the uh, adoption of the agenda and consent items. So move for the adoption of the agenda. Second. And the consent items. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a second by Mr. Warden. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We have approval of minutes. We have an April 29, 2014 special workshop budget meeting and a May 7th. 2014 special workshop budget meeting. Mayor, I'll, I'll move that we approve the April 29th special workshop meeting minutes and the May 7th uh, special workshop meeting minutes as presented. No changes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Next, we have some uh, three presentations for tonight, and I'm going to come forward. Ask Paul Levesque, president of the North Carolina Chapter 5 of Rolling Thunder, if you join me up front, Paul, or to the podium. And, uh, Council, I'd like to have all of you come forward also. Mr. Mayor, council members, city staff, on behalf of Rolling Thunder Chapter 5 North Carolina, it is an honor for us to be here tonight for this special presentation of a national symbol which represents the tens of thousands of Americans who have fought for this country but never came home. For those who may not know what Rolling Thunder is all about, and for those who, who do, I would like to remind you with, with some information about uh, our POWs and MIAs uh, and what we do in our organization. Rolling Thunder's major mission is to publicize the POW MIA issue and to educate the public that many American prisoners of war were left behind after all previous wars and to help correct the past and to protect future veterans from being left behind should they become POW MIA. We are also committed to helping American veterans from all wars. 
While we are not a motorcycle club, we do use our motorcycles and the noise to draw attention to our mission. We ride for those who can't. Rolling Thunder members are old and young, men and women, veterans and non-veterans. All are united in the cause to bring full accountability for POWs and MIAs from all wars, reminding the government, the media, and the public by our watchwords we will not forget. The name Rolling Thunder is derived from the constant bombing of North, North Vietnam in 1965, which was given the name Operation Rolling Thunder. No officers or members of Rolling Thunder Incorporated receive compensation. We all donate and volunteer our time. There are currently more than 83,000 American POWs and MIAs unaccounted for since World War II. Over 73,000 from World War II, 7,900 from the Korean War, 126 from the Cold War, over 1,600 from the Vietnam War, and one American soldier, Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, who is currently being held as a prisoner of war in Afghanistan since 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, I will ask the members of Rolling Thunder at this time to come up for the uh, floor for the presentation. <coughs> History of the flag, the POWMI flag this evening will be uh, Member Laura Garcia. Good evening. In 1971, Mrs. Michael Hoff the wife of a U.S. military officer listed as missing in action during the Vietnam War, developed the idea for a national flag to remind every American of the U.S. service members whose fates were never accounted for during that war. The black and white image of a gaunt silhouette, a strand of barbed wire, and an anonymous watchtower was designed by Newt Heisley, a former World War II pilot some claim the silhouette is a profile of Heisley's son, who contracted hepatitis while training to go to Vietnam. The virus ravaged his body, leaving his features hollow and emaciated. They suggest that while staring at his son's sunken features, Heisley saw the stark image of American service members held captive under harsh conditions. Using a pencil, he sketched his son's profile creating the basis for a symbol that would come to have a powerful impact on the national conscience. By the end of the Vietnam War, more than 2,500 service members were listed by the Department of Defense as prisoner of war or missing in action. In 1979, as families of the missing pressed for full accountability, Congress and the President proclaimed the first national POW MIA Recognition Day to acknowledge the family's concerns and symbolize the steadfast resolve of the American people to never forget the men and women who gave up their freedom protecting ours. Three years later, in 1982, the POW MIA flag became the only flag other than the Stars and Stripes to fly over the White House in Washington, D.C. On August 10, 1990, Congress passed U.S. Public Law 101 TAC 355, designating the POW MIA flag the symbol of our nation's concern and commitment to resolving as fully as possible the fates of Americans still prisoner, missing, and unaccounted for in Southeast Asia. Congress designated the third Friday of September as National POW MIA Recognition Day and ordered prominent display of the POW MIA flag on this day and several other national observances, including Armed Forces Day, Memorial Day, 
Flag Day, Independence Day, and Veterans Day. The 1998 Defense Authorization Act, Public Law 105, TAC 85, mandates that on these national observances, the POW MIA flag is to be flown over the White House, the U.S. Capitol, the Korean and Vietnam Veterans War Memorials, the offices of the Secretaries of State, Defense, and Veterans Affairs, offices of the Director of the Selective Service System, every major military installation as directed by the Secretary of Defense, every post office and all Department of Veterans Affairs, medical centers and national cemeteries. The act also directs VA medical centers to fly the POW MIA flag on any day on which the flag of the United States is displayed. When displayed from a single flagpole, the POW MIA flag should fly directly below and be no larger than the United States flag. If on separate poles, the U.S. flag should always be placed to the right of all other flags. On the six national observances for which Congress has ordered display of the POW MIA flag, it is generally flown immediately below or adjacent to the United States flag as second in order of precedence. It is with a great deal of honor to be able to post the MIA POW flag in the, these chambers where it will continue to fly. I want to thank Chapter 5 of, of the Rolling Thunder uh, for all that you do to keep the hope alive and the memories alive. And as the flag says, to those that are unaccounted for, you are not forgotten and you will never be forgotten in this community. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask Alex Shreve, who's the chairperson of the ONSO Commission for Persons with Disabilities, to help me out here in presenting some awards. <clears throat> I'll let you hold it. The ONSO Commission for Persons with Disabilities in the city of Jacksonville sponsored their annual poster poetry and essay <laughs> contest to help promote Disabilities Awareness Week. The theme for the contest this year was focus on your on the ability dis the disability a winner from each participating grade level that submitted entries was selected by a judge judging panel made up of members of the commission and the city clerk's office one teacher was also selected this year for excellence and participation based on student entries that most clearly related to the theme each winner will receive a certificate and a $50 gift card. The winning entries are on display in the lobby out here until Friday, May 23rd, and we'll be at the Jacksonville Mall over the Memorial Day weekend. So if you get a chance, well, while you're here tonight, might as well take a look at them, huh? And if not, when you go shopping at the mall, you can see them out there. So I'm going to call each, uh, each of these uh, Young, uh, young folks up and uh, we'll recognize them for their po uh, poster, poetry, and essay uh, writing uh, and fixing up uh, 
capabilities here, and I'll list her school. First, I'm going to start with our kindergarten uh, entrant, uh, Brianna White from Carolina Forest Elementary School. stay up here with us for a few minutes. How's that? <laughs> Next from Carolina Forest Elementary is our first grade uh, contestant, Madison Martin. I know where all the pretty girls go to school at now. <laughs> they go to Carolina Forests. Of course, I'm going to probably get proven that's not necessarily so in a minute. <laughs> our, second, our second grade uh, contestant uh, comes from Hunters Creek Elementary, and that's uh, Lainey Allen. Who would have thought they had pretty girls on the other side of town, too? <laughs> Thank you, Laney. Next, our third grade uh, contestant is from Del Alio Elementary at the Air Station. I think that's the Air Station, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Marilyn Tarado. Our fourth grade contestant okay, is Brianna Verdecido from Carolina Forest Elementary. Fifth grade at Infinite Prague, Destiny West. <laughs> Our sixth grade contestant comes from Brewster Middle School, Evelyn Neese. Seventh grade uh, recipient from Dixon Middle School is Samantha Wallace. Oops, Samantha must not be here. Okay. Eighth grade uh, from Newbridge Middle School, we have Aurora Ackerman.
Our 11th, uh, 11th grade recipient is from Lejeune High School, and it would be Duncan Frazier. In 12th grade, Lejeune High School, we have Simba Wallace. <laughs> ho, ho, Simba, come on. And our winning teacher from the sixth grade at Brewster Middle School, Vanessa Coleman. Let's, let's get another round of applause for them. Family members and friends that came out tonight in support of all these young men and women who did such a fine job of uh, uh, participating in the contest this year. I know that you're very proud of them, and you should be. Uh, with a great deal of pride, I'd like to ask. Uh, Miss Alicia, Miss Alicia Offord and Craig Wagner, if you could join me up front, please. <clears throat> Craig, good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you all. Uh, the City of Jacksonville and Jacksonville Oslo Volunteer Center, a program of the United Way, of which Craig is the executive director of the United Way of Oslo, recognizes the value of volunteers in the community and the agencies they serve. 
As a founding uh, partner for Jacksonville Oslo Volunteer Center over 13 years ago, the city annually celebrates the success of our community's top volunteers. Ms. Alicia Alford recently received a very special award, the North, Carolina, the North Carolina Governor's Award for Outstanding Volunteer Service. What a recognition for someone in your community to receive. And we're, we're so blessed to have someone like you in our community that, to, that carries on that spirit of volunteerism. Only a few volunteers in the entire state have received this award, the prestigious Governor's Medallion Award, which she wears around her neck tonight for volunteer service. And I'm gonna let uh, Mr. Craig Wagner here, again, like I said, the Executive Director of the United Way, uh, talk to you a little bit more about that. And then I'm gonna have Ms. Alicia to tell you about her passion. Great, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Council members, for inviting us today to recognize such an important honor and to recognize a local volunteer. Every fall, the Volunteer Center accepts nominations to award and recognize area volunteers through the Golden Rule Awards. Local winners of this award in the adult, youth, and team categories are submitted to the state-level Governor's Award for recognition. With numerous nominations received across the state, only the top 20 are presented with the Governor's Medallion Award for Volunteer Service, and we're so proud to have a local recipient, Ms. Alicia Alford. Alicia first volunteered in the fall of 2010 as a coach for the Girls in the Run program, an after-school youth development empowerment program for students. That culminates in a celebratory 5K race with students and their mentors. As the program quickly grew, the Wilmington Family YMCA, who administers the program, needed a county and race coordinator, and Alicia stepped up to serve in that capacity. Alicia has trained the coaches, coordinated the school sites, and grew the program to incorporate young boys through a similar model called Stride. In addition, the semi-annual 5K races attract over 1,500 runners to celebrate the accomplishments of the children. She has tirelessly served Onslow County and the surrounding areas for over two years, securing sponsors on a local and national level for the races, as well as securing funding from local organizations to underwrite the program and allow underprivileged girls and boys to participate through scholarship. The spirit of volunteerism prevails in Jacksonville and Onslow County. It's part of our culture that makes us the heart of Coastal Carolina and the soul that makes us a caring community. Volunteers are critical for nonprofit agencies as they pioneer dynamic solutions to growing community needs, especially in times of dwindling resources. Alicia epitomizes the spirit which personifies her generosity and the loving sacrifices she makes to a cause so dear to her heart. And I'm proud to present the recipient of the 2014 Governor's Medallion Award for Volunteer Service, Ms. Alicia Offord. Um, thank you. It's quite an honor, and I don't really consider that I received this award on my behalf, but on, I consider that I received it on behalf of the community. Um, I truly believe that this program and the success of Girls on the Run and Stride or our 5K races are Jacksonville and Onslow County at our best because it's been such a collaborative effort from the city helping us, the school system, um, Coastal Carolina Community College, the the businesses in our community. Um, it's just, it's been tremendous. I, I don't think I've once gone to someone and asked for help that they've said no. And I think that's not atypical of this community. It's, it's just, um, as all of you know, it's very welcoming and enthusiastic. Um, the stories of how this program has transformed not only young girls' lives, but the, their family members who start training with them are pretty phenomenal. Um, I, had, I was in um, Best Buy recently, and a lady there who helps told me that the, her, that the first 5K race she ever ran was one of our um, Girls on the Run stride races, and that she never thought she'd run because, would ever run because when she was 24, she'd had a heart attack. So not only are we, are we impacting the lives of young children, um, but we're making the we're making all of us healthier and better. We're um, creating a quality of life for this community. And um, I thought I would just share a few numbers with y'all and then I'll be quiet. But um, we started this program in 2009 and we had three schools that um, piloted Girls on the Run. We had about 36 girls that when they finished it went down to Wilmington to run their 5K. 
Um, last spring in 2013, we had 20 schools in Onslow County participate. Five of those offered both Girls on the Run and Stride. And also last spring, we had our first military school, Delalio. So those of you from Delalio can give yourselves a hand. And for those of you who are from Brewster, um, we really want to get um, in the schools there. So if you think this sounds like something your school would um, be interested in, stop me on the way out the door because we can help you there. Um, we, thought the, we thought our races had plateaued. We started out with 120 race, uh, about 100 runners, I'll say, and it was this friendly, sort of sweet, nice neighborhood race. Um, on Saturday, May 10th, we had we were six people shy of having 1,500 runners. And if you consider about half of those are between the ages of nine and 12, um, it's exciting and it's nerve wracking. And if you want to feel good about life, come see it because these kids are phenomenal as they cross the finish line. Um, we have a race that's the first um, Saturday in December called the Physical Therapy Clinic's Mary Fitness 5K. And we have a race the second Saturday in May, the Marine Chevy Shuffle. And the best Christmas present you can give yourself is come watch these kids cross the line. And the best spring, you know, spring outing, in my opinion, um, is the Marine Chevy Shuffle. Um, but thanks to everybody, thanks to the city council, the just the school system to all of you you've probably been in schools where they offer the program or you've um, you know visited our one of our sponsors and made their business successful so they in turn can help us so um, thank you Didn't know it had grown that much. Wow, that's a lot of people, almost 1,500 little runners out there. Um, I'm going to take a real quick pause, uh, and I know some of you came solely for the purpose of the presentations tonight and probably don't want to stay for the regular business meeting. And again, I'll throw this out there that you are welcome to stay. I don't know why you would want to, but you are welcome to stay. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go ahead and take a quick pause and allow you to leave.
Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna to go back in session now that Ron's back. <laughs> <coughs> we waited. We waited for you. Um, anyway, that brings us to our first session of public comment. For the first and only session of public comment for the evening. Uh, I didn't have anyone to sign up, but I know that there may be someone out there that did yeah. want to speak. No. Which may have came in late. <laughs> Say Richard. Jill and Jill oh. okay. Richard probably have something. To <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, forego the opportunity to have a public co uh, comment session. Uh, this brings us to item two on the agenda, and this is Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee appointments. And um, we have, I don't have mine pulled up. Anyway, we have some appointments to made, be made to the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. And Council Member Jerome Willingham is the Council Liaison to the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. And I'll turn to you at this time, Mr. Willingham, for any nominations you may have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate James Wheeler to the term expiring in 2015. And Ms. Samantha Turnley to, to the term expiring in 2017. All right, Councilor, are there any other nominations? Mr. Mayor, I move that the nominations be closed and the candidates be accepted by acclamation. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That brings us to the report section of tonight's meeting, and I'll start this time with Mr. Warden. No report, sir. Mr. Thomas? Uh, no report, thank you. Ms. Washington? Um, recently, on this past Sunday, I had an opportunity to represent um, the mayor and the Jacksonville City Council at the Caravettes Club celebrating their 37th anniversary here in the city of Jacksonville. I permit, excuse me, I presented a proclamation to Mr. Jim Roddy and its members honoring those that created this club, as well as their annual fundraising contributions to nonprofit donations. And this year their monies went to Relay for Life. So there is a footage of me presenting the proclamation to the Caravettes Club celebrating their 37th <coughs> anniversary here in the city of Jacksonville. Thank you very much, is that all? Yes, sir. Mr. Willingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, let's move. The, um, our First Lady, uh, Michelle Obama, created uh, or originated the Let's Move um, program to address the epidemic of childhood obesity. And the program is committed to um, eradicating childhood obesity within 10 years. The National League of Cities, um, to which we're, we are a member city, adopted the program and their program is called Let's Move Cities, uh, Towns, and Counties. And the effort is to focus on not just moving and physical activity, but to also focus on nutrition. And um, I would like, unless there are objections from council, to refer that um, program and, and Jacksonville's uh, participation in it to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for their recommendation. Thank you. Nothing further. Mr. Bittner? No report. Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro? No report. Uh, the only thing I have is last this past Thursday uh, was uh, at the uh, Peace Officers Memorial Service. It was held in the Commons. It had a good uh, good attendance for that. Uh, it's that time of year that we uh, remember and memorialize the, those that have uh, sacrificed, uh, made the ultimate sacrifice in, in uh, serving their communities. Also had the opportunity on Friday to attend the small business breakfast at the hospital. Uh, at the small business uh, hospital, I did make a contact that uh, eventually I'm, I'm going to need to talk with you about, uh, Mr. Don Spry, who is the small business administration uh, person from stationed in Wilmington, uh, who has some, who gave me some good ideas uh, that maybe we can incorporate into uh, our downtown uh, revitalization efforts there. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get together and talk about some of that. Uh, at a convenient time. But other than that, uh, Dr. Woodruff, do you have a report? 
We'd like to remind folks that uh, this coming Monday, May 26th, is Memorial Day holiday. City offices and city services will be closed. What this means is that your sanitation service for next week, the Monday collection will not occur until Tuesday. On Tuesday, we will collect the garbage and recycling for the normal Monday route. On Wednesday, we will collect the normal Tuesday route. On Thursday, the normal Thursday route. On Friday, the normal Friday route. But for next week, there will be no yard waste collection. So, Mayor, please coordinate with your next door neighbor to ensure that your yard waste goes into Mr. Lee's container. Yeah, container. Yeah. Yeah. We'd also like to remind folks that it's hard to believe school is almost out. The Sturgeon City Institute applications are now being taken. Applications will be accepted until May the 30th for rising ninth graders and high school students to sign up to attend the Sturgeon City Institutes. Please go to the Sturgeon City website at sturgeoncity.org. That is sturgeoncity.org for more information. We'd also like to remind folks that on May the 31st, Saturday at 1000, at the Veterans, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial will be rededicated. We encourage the public to come for that very important ceremony. Again, that's 1000 on Saturday, 31 May. And that's, of course, at the Memorial Gardens. As always, Mayor and Council, we thank you for your dedicated service, especially during this time of budget preparation. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Carter? Mayor for Mayor. Thank you. Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. so moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion to second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned.